Uh, this afternoon, for our last case of the day, we've got this dog that has a soft tissue sarcoma right over kind of the ischiatic tuberosity and the um, greater trochanter. So I'm going to draw a circle around the mass here. And then we're going to come a couple of centimeters beyond it uh, to get our wide margins. We've done a CT scan and found that uh, the mass is attached to the probably the superficial gluteal muscle, so we'll take that as a deep margin. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. Um, so we did an aspirate on it and found out that it was a soft tissue sarcoma. We don't know the grade yet. Uh, and the grade is important, obviously, because that's going to predict the risk of, of metastasis for the most part. Um, uh, we, you might have to turn off and turn back on. Check our ground plate as well. Um, So the, mar the um, grade is not really going to affect the likelihood of recurrence because we are getting nice broad margins and based on the CT scan it's not terribly invasive laterally, um, but it is going to predict the risk of metastasis. And so the risk of metastasis with soft tissue sarcomas, grade 1 is about 5%, grade 2 is about 10%, grade 3 is about 50%. Chemotherapy has been shown not to reduce the incidence or um, progression of metastasis. And so we don't use chemotherapy for that purpose. We do use chemotherapy, however, to um, prevent local recurrence if you got a dirty margin on a soft tissue sarcoma. And metronomic chemotherapy is what we use, and typically we use paroxicam and uh, cyclophosphamide done every other day for the rest of the life of the pet. And in one study that was found to be equivalent to radiation therapy in preventing local recurrence following incompletely excised soft tissue sarcomas. Now in order to close this, we are going to do a flank fold flap, and that is my favorite reconstructive flap. It's very, very reliable. Um, risk of necrosis of the tip of the flap is quite low. So if you are thinking about getting into doing reconstructive surgery and Axial pattern flaps and stuff like that, flank fold flap is a great one to start with um, because you are likely to have a high success rate. It's very um, disappointing when you do an axial pattern flap and then it, it fails. So do a few of them with flank fold flaps, get used to it, get accustomed to how you do the, the surgery and then you can start branching out to the other ones. So, now I'm just going a bit deeper in here, and I will encounter the superficial gluteal muscle at some point. Now, if I was worried about my, the completeness of my surgical margins, which I'm not, but if I was worried about it, we might harvest our flap first. So I'm down to biceps muscle here. and I will take the external fascia of that biceps muscle. Now note that you can take the entire biceps muscle out of the dog with no functional impairment whatsoever. Anybody think of another flap that we could use in this area um, to close this defect? Deep circumflex iliac? Yeah, so Ramesh is here, who's a uh, from India, and he's done the Vet Dojo Axial Pattern Flap course, and he's come up with deep circumflex iliac um, in either dorsal or ventral branch, and that would be very effective um, in this area as well. You might be able to get a caudal superficial epigastric up here. You could do a tail, so a tail fillet.
So I'm going through superficial gluteal here. So that superficial gluteal that I'm reflecting up. Actually, that might be biceps. I stand practice that as biceps muscle. Superficial gluteal is down here. So that's greater trochanter and that's superficial gluteal. Now over the greater trochanter, like this is, if you tried to close this primarily, you would almost certainly get a dehiscence because of that pressure point. So that's why it's one of the reasons why we're doing a flank fold flap to reconstruct it. Now deep in here is the sciatic nerve. So we're gonna have to be a bit careful with that. Nothing like, it's not very close to where we're working, but it is a consideration. So I'm taking just that biceps fascia as my deep margin. So that's our tumor excision there. We've got that biceps muscle fascia sitting on top here. And if you look back here, you can see the biceps muscle originating from the um, ischiatic tuberosity up there. Um, can I get some epivacaine, please? Okay. Um, what kind of reaction are you getting? Just, just. And are you getting tachycardia? Is that what you're seeing? Okay. Um, yeah, we can use, uh, you can use a fentanyl bolus or CRI or whatever you like. All right, so now what I'm doing here is I'm just elevating the skin to see where I have the most loose skin here. It's actually quite a bit there, but that's too close to my incision. Probably go right about here. Like this, I'll grab onto that with my towel clamps. And when I do my flank fold flap, I like to kind of elevate it and push it together to see, make sure that my donor site is not going to be under too much tension. Just see if there's any place that I could get more. That's pretty good like that. All right, so lift that up pretty high. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I'm gonna have to create a bridge incision like this. Usually what I do with the bridge incision is, which I'll come down a little bit more, and I'll take out a rectangle of skin here, and that's gonna be my bridge, okay? All right, so is that gonna close happily? Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, so can you guys see the shape of that flat? Check that. So that's my bridge and that's my flap there. I've never seen you remove this. Yeah. <laughs> 
Maybe, uh, Stick with me, Ramesh. You'll learn a lot of new things. <laughs> and you can leave the skin in and then just see where, you know, if you could use it for part of the reconstruction. But I'm very confident that we're going to be able to close this. So. There, there will be a big fold. Right? Yeah. Uh, can I get some tension mm -hmm. there? Now, a, a less invasive reconstructive technique that if we wanted to just close that primarily, we could do a Z-plasty. Yeah, question, Yeah? Uh, does the surgical wound look so deep? Will you be putting in a Jackson crack drain? I will not be putting a drain in this. Definitely do not need a drain. Good question. Yeah. And then when I'm excising or, or undermining this flap, I'm staying as close as I can to the underlying muscle. Yeah, that, that right there, yeah. You get some 2 PDS, please. Okay, so that'll go up here, like this. Just release this a little bit more. And then... We'll put some towel clamps just to kind of approximate how I want this flap to go. that down. A block there, please. Hold on to that, please, for me.
too strong. Uh, do you want to grab some more suture material and start suturing some interrupted? Uh, just do some, like what I'm doing, kind of a deep, deep in your know, sub cue. So, uh, are we using ACE and methadone? Yeah, so ACE and methadone for pre-med and then induction with alfaxan and then maintenance with isoflurane and then boluses of alfaxan as needed. And I think we've gone on to a bit of fentanyl as well. Uh, I can do that another time. Um, so that is one thing that we do. Right, uh, right now we've got a, a cautery plate, but in the past I have just um, taken the cautery sticker that normally goes on the patient and just stuck it on the, um, on the table, the metal table, and that works really well. We treated, you know, we probably operated on 5,000 patients with that technique and never had a burn. Can I get some more 2 please? So drains are really, I know you guys have heard it before, but are really overutilized in dogs. Whenever you think about pulling a drain out, as in bringing a drain out and using it on a patient, really think about whether you need that. I think you'll find that in the majority of cases you don't. Drains increase the risk of infection. almost as fast as me, but she does a better job. <laughs> Thank you. 
aqui. So we're doing all of these interrupted sutures as like a deep sub-Q or sub-Q sutures and then Anna's going to come back and do an intradermal around the whole incision. So Mariana, when you suture, I'll show you, so taking a bite, try to pull on the long end so that the tag is shorter. Yep. So as you slip knot, as you pull on it, just bring that short end down like that so that you're wasting less suture mm -hmm. between bites. Your boss will be very happy with you. <laughs> Good for the environment yeah. and good for the pocketbook. So I'm going to teach a course tomorrow for vet partners on brachycephalic airway surgery. And I'll talk about spinal diseases and brachycephalics and gastrointestinal disease and patella luxation as well as all the airway diseases that we get. That's at Kilo Park, which is the vet partner's oh, yeah, yeah, the training, center. training center. I've been doing, I've done, I was supposed to have done 10 this year, and then they just this weekend added five more dates in Queensland and Victoria for me. So it's a lecture or? Uh, so half lecture, half laboratory. So cadaver dissection. Can I get some more to it, please? You happy to finish this up? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. So I'll come back and make sure I've answered all the questions. Okay. So that's pretty much it. So um, Anna is going to come through with an intradermal suture pattern and close that up. Um, and we're very privileged here to have multiple people helping suture, so we were able to get this far in 24 minutes of airtime. Um, so that's great for the patient, and yeah, and great for the um, yeah for the outcome. Anyway, so thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding.